I'm gonna blow and go because um, I, I will. Um, I know I'll get I'll get the hook. So if I don't, uh, but but uh, obviously real dudes get up early and. That's why I tell our players all the time, you run the streets at night, you got to be a big big boy and be a man the next morning and get up and uh, come to work. So appreciate you guys being here this morning. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, annual plan. Um, and I'm going to try to get all the way through it. And basically what I'm going to cover is our 2018 annual plan. Um, and and I, I'm, I don't really want to get into the nuts and bolts of what we're doing right now. Uh, it's not that far off, but I think it's more uh, applicable uh, for everybody, if I, if I can just go through the whole year from last year, so you guys can see that. Um, and, uh, and that's what I'm going to go with. So we'll get this thing going. Uh, staff wise, <clears throat> I always like putting these guys first because, as you guys know, um, you know, it's not going to be just one guy running the deal. And yes, I'm the lead on the staff, all that stuff, but uh, I'm unbelievably lucky to have the guys I have uh, working uh, with us together. Uh, Coach Peoples, so on my staff, I have about 27 years of Division I head football experience, um, including myself. Coach Peoples, head guy at Western Michigan for eight years. Coach Oyster was a head guy at Iowa State for a year. Coach Grace, head guy at Houston for two years. Uh, Coach Potts um, has been with me now for three years at Texas also. And then Coach Van Dyke. Uh, some of you guys might know Matt Van Dyke. He's wrote a lot of books, uh, triphasic work, stuff like that. He's our sports science director. Um, I got unbelievable staff, though. I mean, they are phenomenal at what they do. Um, Coach Oyster, for some of you guys that are interns, uh, in 2006, he was an intern for me at Rice. Um, Coach Grace was a GA for me at Iowa State. Uh, Coach Van Dyke was an intern for me at Iowa State. Chris Campbell, who's right here in the crowd also, who's now the head guy at Austin P. It was an intern for me at Iowa State, um, and we got a bunch of them out there um, doing some good things in the field. So uh, a bunch of those guys have been with me a long time. So um, really good staff, though. Okay, uh, annual plan. We'll start, obviously, winter, spring. Uh, we work our annual plan. I will tell you this, um, and I, I think most of you guys probably understand that. We work it backwards. So we know 2019 where we want to be at bowl-wise uh, as far as where we want to end at. Um, and then we kind of work our plan backwards from that way all the way back to winter. And so for us right now, <clears throat> we graduated a, quite a few guys on defense. Uh, so we got a pretty young team uh, and we don't have a big senior class. Probably 12 guys, I think is what we got in our senior class. So we're pretty, we're pretty heavy in the sophomore and freshman area. Uh, so our winter off season is a little bit different than last year's uh, winter off season. Uh, we ran a little bit more last winter. Uh, this year, we lifted just a little bit more, a little bit put, put a little bit more emphasis on our lifts um, just because of our youth, all right? And I think you guys know that when you guys have teams, every year's going to be a little bit different as far as what you have uh, chemistry-wise, um, the age, training age, all that other stuff. So you got to adjust those things uh, to, those, uh, to the guys you got in your locker room. So that's what we do. All right, so winter. Uh, <clears throat> for us, uh, we had... You know, coming in our winter program, usually we have about two weeks off after our bowl game, two and a half. This last year we had three, uh, three weeks off. Um, and, th and then basically our goals in the winter, because we have two cycles in winter, you got the time, um, you know, really before the second signing period, uh, as far as with your coaches, they're out, they're out recruiting. Uh, so we've got them for about four weeks uh, without the coaches there. When the coaches get back, when we start our, our tour of duty, our mat drills, our, our, our comp uh, competitive phase, uh, with our agility work, things like that. So this block right here, obviously you're coming out of the season, you know, and you played anywhere from, you know, 12 to 14. And if you're lucky, you play 15, uh, uh, like Coach Batson, um, every year. Uh, that's what we're striving to try to get to. Uh, but you got some guys that are beat up, dinged up. Um, you know, and the other thing, too, is if you think about it, restoring mobility is probably the most important thing you're going to work on in the winter. Um, you know, obviously there's some other things you're wanting to get done too, as far as strength and hypertrophy and things like that. But really, if you think about the time you check into camp in August and you get done bowl wise, January 1, December 30th, whatever it is, uh, August, yeah, I mean, what is that? Five months. That's five months of taped, braced, uh, football positions. All right. Um, things like that, that really don't promote mobility. All right. So you're working through some some things uh, to try to get these guys back moving in some, in some fluid patterns. So 
that's a big thing for us as far as when we get back is, is really going back to single leg work, going back to, you know, all your corrective exercises, things like that to get these guys kind of moving around again. Uh, we use, and we're lucky, I'm lucky because I, I do have a sports science director that's in-house with me every day, every single workout, every single run, every single practice. We actually plan all of our practices with Coach Herman, with our football staff, uh, with Coach Van Dyke and our strength staff, training room, the whole nine yards. Uh, so everything's pretty planned out from that side of it. But we have a Dari 360 in our weight room, um, which is basically, uh, think of it almost like a functional, uh, a functional movement screen test uh, to a degree. Uh, there's eight cameras on, the, on, the, on the, the canopy deal. They'll go through about a series of 17 tests. We test that roughly four times a year. Uh, we'll test it. We're just going to finish it this week uh, with our guys. Uh, we'll test it <clears throat> at the end of the season before camp. Uh, we always hit it in May, and then we try to hit one more, all right, when we get back from winter if we have time. Okay, so it's three to four times we hit it a year. Um, and it gives us a great snapshot, a whole view of our team as far as what they need. So like last year it was hip dominant, which, duh, all right, uh, all need to be hip dominant, but it was some reactive plyometric stuff that we're missing, a lot of single leg stuff. And so it gave us a snapshot of our whole team. So when we did our PAP, our pre-activity preparation, uh, circuits in the weight room, we were able to get a little bit more precise on what we were trying to do as far as getting the guys ready and, and hip mobility and uh, uh, glute activation, things like that. And then you set your individual plan based off some of the movement screen tests, all right, on the back end of the workout. Maybe it's correctives, maybe it's post, post work, or, you know, we looked at, you know, it was single leg, single leg uh, um, uh, emphasis heavy uh, last year and this year. Uh, work capacity. Obviously, and then hypertrophy, uh, high volume, low intensity, slow. We take it slow. Um, don't get too too fast with that uh, as far as getting up there. In the cycle two, we'll get up there a little bit higher as far as our test test work, things like that. And then obviously body composition. Uh, oh, sorry. And then cycle two, uh, you can kind of see right there, we're going to test in that cycle. Uh, power strength. And then obviously maximum effort strength. So it'll change a little bit there. <coughs> And then that's the block right there, the actual template or our annual plan part of it. Where's my laser at? I don't want to hit the eject button, Robin, and send anybody out of here. Uh, so you kind of see right there week one through four, and then the last week is a test week, week eight. Um, so this is from last year. Um, you know, we actually, we use most of our cycles, our Prilipin cycles. Um, that's kind of how we work. So, you know, your base load. And we'll deload when we test, and that early block, we don't need to deload, man. They've had like three weeks off, so we're, we're good on that. Um, and then that, like I said, that week four is kind of a, you know, from a volume perspective, it's a little bit, it's a little bit uh, less volume-wise with the intensity. So you kind of see there, um, you know, what we're looking at as far as what we're trying to do and what our goals and objectives are in that cycle and that block. <clears throat> like I said, when we get to week eight, you know, that's... For us last year, that was, um, went right up to spring break, and then we came back after spring break and started spring ball. This year's been a little bit different. We did a seven week block, well, six and a half really, and then started spring ball, and then took a spring break, and then came back at three weeks of uh, spring ball. And we just got finished up with that. Um, but you can kind of see right there, starting off wise on our max effort uh, um, block, 65% on week one, then an 8% jump, 72 then to 76 to 80. So we took our time to get to 80, you know, it took about four weeks and then come back week five, 85, 90. So we hit, you know, two nineties uh, in that last, above nineties in that last two weeks. And test wise last, last year we had, you know, I know people like, you know, they get kind of, people get prickly pear about this, about chasing numbers. And I'm not really chasing numbers, but you gotta be competitive too. You know what I mean? So. And guys want to see what they're going to be able to do, and you want to be able to do it in an efficient manner and be safe and all that stuff. Uh, but we do one RMs, one one RMs, all right. And it's bench squat clean. And be honest with you, when we bench press, I lift it off. I'm there around it, but I ain't touching it. I'm not hovering around it. You either get it or you don't get it. Back squat, same thing. It's unrack it. We're there on the side spots, all that stuff, but we ain't hugging guys. So, so it is what it is. And power clean, 
I don't know why you'd spot a power clean, but uh, people do it. Um, so it is, it is what it is. So it's, it's, it's a one rep max, all right? And that's what we do. Uh, we hit that in the winter last year, and then we hit it one more time uh, in July, right before our break, if guys want to try to PR again. So that's what we did. Um, <clears throat> but from the, one, from the aspect of the 1RM test, um, you know, that's what I've done forever. Um, I just, it's what I believe in. Uh, but I also train that way too with my guys. I mean, they train some heavy singles, uh, doubles, things like that. Um, and you got to load these guys. I don't care where you're at, you have to. Um, and so uh, to be able to withstand what they're going to have to do in the football season, that's for dang sure. Um, they got to have some load on them. So anyway, that's, that's, our, um, that's our strength block there as far as the eight week winter. Um, and then spring ball, kind of moving to spring ball. I guess, let me take a step back. From a, from a run perspective in the, in the winter off season, um, so on Mondays, and that's not on the slide, but I can tell you real quick right off the top of my head. Monday's an acceleration day for us, so that's like, think of it like um, everything from a horizontal push, all right? And angles, shin angles, chest position, and it's really, we do it Monday pretty much year round, all right? except for spring ball or football. Uh, but that is a day that we get into a football position, great shin angles, push, everything is horizontal. You do your broad jump series on that day, that's your plyometric work there. You do your wall drills, you do all your sled toes, your 10 yard sprints, and everything is, is pretty short as far as volume, um, but the intensity is super high. It is a high CNS day that day uh, on Monday. Tuesday in the winter for us, uh, last year was a change of direction day. Uh, and it was basically intro work. Uh, we actually, we do a lot of agility ring stuff. So we're working like lateral pushing, edge pressure in your feet. Um, and then learning how to cut and stick, um, you know, applying force in the ground uh, uh, laterally also. So that's on Tuesday. We've got some decel drills that day also, as far as stopping and sticking uh, from a forward sprint to a lateral shuffle to a backward run, to a crossover run. Um, and that's how, kind of how we look at it too when we break it down. If you look at those movement patterns, you know, forward sprint, lateral shuffle, a back pedal, and then a crossover run, I mean, that's the four things they do, right, in football, all right, in some form or fashion. And then we start adding those in the summertime, we start adding a little bit more uh, moving pieces to that as far as some of the movements with our programmable uh, uh, drills on Tuesday with our conditioning components. So I'll try to get in that in a second. Um, spring ball. Oh, I'm sorry. Thursday, too. <laughs> I'm jumping all over the place. Thursday was a high-speed treadmill day. So we actually have um, six high-speed treads from Performex. Um, and they're 30-mile-an-hour they're 30 30 capability, 30-degree uh, um, uh, angle as far as uh, uh, altitude training also um, those are for us same thing you talk about gate mechanics and a max velocity day per se it's tough it's tough to really train like max velocity especially with football guys man I mean 90% of the time they're what they're in this position all the time right so to get them up tall to get them on heel pull to the rear and cycling through Man, it's tough. So you go out there and you run 110s or 100s or 90s or whatever it may be, uh, and you see the same thing. You start seeing that forward lean. You start seeing the big back swing with the back foot, seeing the bottom of the foot as they're running. You know, you could say, oh, we go put them on the ramps or the hills, whatever it is, which is true too, but you're going to see at the back side of that run, what are you going to see? Big torso lean, all right, hips out of it. They go right back to the position of acceleration, really. And so on that day for us, we, we kind of kill a bunch of birds with one stone. Uh, we're able to work conditioning. We're able to work hip girdle strength, all right? And then also max velocity uh, capabilities too, all right, on the tread. So we've got six of them. We're sitting there spotting them, we're coaching them. And we've got the set as far as like, cause we know catapult. Uh, we know exactly what they run in game. Um, we got a pretty good idea from their 10 yard sprint on the laser to their broad jump to their body weight what their projected 40 is. I don't time them, but I time 10s. Uh, so I got a pretty good idea what they're gonna do in a 40 yard sprint. So we're able to set their 
speed criteria on the high speed tread based on what we feel like they run. If they're a four or five guy, then they're running in this zone right here as far as their run, as far as their miles per hour. And the other thing that you do too on the high speed tread, as a coach, you control everything. You control the duration, the intensity, all right, and to the technique to a degree. Because if the technique gets sloppy, the hips will fall out, what's that tread doing? It's pulling them down, right? And so you sit there and spot them low back, push the hips in, they can grab the bar, whatever it is, uh, to help them. But the one thing you do know in a 100-yard sprint, and all of us know this, all of them got the time in their head figured out. If it's 15 seconds to make it from goal line to 100, guess what they do? They sprint the first 60, and then what do they do? The last 40. Do what everybody doesn't want them to do. Glide. <laughs> right? Because we always talk about finish, 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 finish. All right? And then we're running these sub-maximal hundreds and stuff like that, uh, and the guys are shutting it down the last 40 yards because they know the time in their head exactly where they need to be at to cross the line at the target time, right? So for this, six seconds, eight seconds, 10 seconds, whatever it is, it is set at that speed. Does that make sense? All right, so conditioning component on that day is real, all right? So that would be the only day of the whole year or any time in their career that I let them sit down in the weight room, all right? Because the minute they get off that treadmill, man, they got to find something. You know what I mean? Like, oh, man, you know, like, i gotta, I got to sit down. <laughs> so we let them. Like, they want to lay on the floor, lay on the floor, whatever. Uh, so it's a tough day that day, very tough. Um, and then, like last year, depending on it, then Friday, uh, we'd hit another change of direction day, another install of, of uh, basically like crossover sled work, all right, heavy toes there. Uh, we do like an angle pedal drill to work hips and stand square, all right. You think about football, and I don't care what position you play, if they can't stay square in their movement patterns and they got to turn their shoulders and turn their hips, they're going to be out of position all the time, all right? And they're going to be hurt too. That's the other thing too. So you think about, well, it's just for linebackers. No, it's not. If an O-line guy can't stay square, all right, he's in trouble, all right? Going to get double teams creased, always going to be in a bad position. If a D-line guy can't stay square to the line of scrimmage, he gives the running back all types of different cuts, right? So there's all kinds of things there as far as working hip strength that tie into lateral movement and having hip control, all right? Okay, good on that? Okay, spring ball. Uh, so for us in spring ball, uh, you know, we try to get three days in a, uh, in a week on lifts. Usually it depends on what coach has got as far as his practice schedule. Obviously, you got to adjust, right? As a strength coach or the sport coach, you have to uh, adjust your stuff when season starts. All right, for us, when they put a helmet on, and we always look at it, you know, there's a pie, right? Okay, and there's only so much time and so much of that pie of that, of that athlete that we can take from, all right, in the season, if you will, okay? So spring ball is no different, all right? Uh, we just aren't going every single day back to back, all right? Usually we practice Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, we've practiced Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, which was unbelievable schedule for us. Because then we were able to lift Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and still kind of stay in an off-season mode, if you will, um, with them. And that was unbelievable as far as, um, especially like at Houston, we had that. We practiced Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and we were able to train Monday, Wednesday, Friday with meetings. And then we were able to push our test cycle back to May, all right? So we were able to really take our time in the winter off-season and, and, and slow cook the guys all the way through the whole semester. Um, Velocity-based training at this time, though. Uh, a lot of speed dynamic stuff. Um, you know, whether it's Tendo, you know, this perch thing's pretty slick. Uh, we got one of those units in there right now we're testing. Uh, we also have Viviture, Kong IQ that we're working on uh, right now. So we also have Tendo units, too, that we, we measure all of our bar speed with. Uh, but that time right there, as far as the focus, so, for example, power cleans. I don't really catch them too much in season when they got shoulder pads on. Uh, just don't because it's shoulders. I mean, they're beating the tar out of each other all the time. And you're trying to limit, you know, obviously more contacts, wrist, shoulder, uh, uh, deltoids, all that other stuff because they're beat up, right? So pulls, you know, power clean pulls are great, um, but you get frustrated sometimes, right? Because you don't think they're moving the bar fast enough, right? So we throw a tendo on there, you know, let's go. You got to have it over, you know, we put the tendo in the middle of the bar. We tell them it's got to be, you know, one one uh, meters per second in the middle put it on the outside hub it's one four meters per second 
So then you're talking about you know, moving the bar for speed. Same with squat, for box squatting, deadlifting, whatever it may be. All right, so that time right there, our emphasis changes from tier one max effort, all right, then dynamic effort kind of moves up into that emphasis during that time. So uh, training volume obviously goes down uh, because of what they're doing on the football field, right? So if you go back, you know, we have catapults also with our sports science uh, department. So we're able to measure, we, we, and we wear them year round in our training, in our practice, um, in games, we have all that data. Um, so we know exactly, you know, a wide receiver for us in practice right now, on average, uh, in a practice, uh, total volume yardage about 6,300 yards in a practice is what they move around. Uh, their high speed yardage, which we have set our bands at, I think, 14 miles an hour is what it is. Uh, so anything above that. So they're about, I think, 500 yards of high speed yardage in a practice. All right. In a game, it's a little bit higher, obviously. Um, and then your lineman, O-line guys is about 3,500 yards. D-line's about the same. Uh, the DBs, uh, they're a shade under the wideouts, as crazy as that sounds. Um, and then your linebackers, tight ends are about 5,500 to 5,000 yards volume-wise. Um, so we know pretty much, we know exactly what they do on a daily practice. All right, so in saying that, your training volume's got to adjust too to that, right? You can't just blow them out all the time with that. So we kind of keep our, especially with our big lifts, a clean squat, anything like that, uh, that's going to be a CNS taxing, uh, taxing lift, we'll keep that always under triples, doubles, singles. And really, I try to keep it in the double range, really, is what we'll do. So you can go heavy with them still. Uh, you just can't go above three, if you want my opinion. Then you're starting to talk about, like, you're sucking it out of them now, okay? Um, and then again, you know, adjusting barbells. Like, I'm, I, again, I'm, I'm lucky. I, I have a lot of things, a lot of tools in the toolbox. I've also been on the other side when I was a lot tech as a head guy, and I had a local guy welding me sleds and all that other stuff. I mean, I... I understand the struggle, I promise you. When you're at Louisiana Tech as a head guy and you're going to Super One Foods every day, all right, to get peanut butter and pickles and all this other stuff and pretzels for your guys, I've done that, okay? Um, but, you know, I'm at a different stage now and we have all these things at our, at, our, at our fingertips, our resources, okay? So we have safety squat bars, we have buffalo bars for back squat, uh, we got some uh, fat grip bars, um, trap bars, we have all kinds of different multiple bars, boards for, th uh, for bench press, things like that. Um, you know, everything at our, at our fingertips that we need to train our guys to keep training them at a high level, um, but also make some adjustments too when they're in season. And bar placement or hand placement, obviously in season is pretty important. You know, you straight bar bent, uh, back squat all the time with the old line D-line guys in season, it's tough, man. It's tough on their shoulders. I mean, that's the thing that, that starts going as the season goes. So we got some different things that we can adjust. Like Buffalo Bar, it's going to ride a little lower on the, on the back, uh, pushes the hips back, and it's big guy friendly or football guy friendly in season, all right, with the shoulders because the hands are a little bit lower on the yoke. Um, and then uh, um, same thing with the safety squat bar. If you Hatfield squat or Hatfield split with it or you front squat reverse yoke, I mean, it's, it's some great stuff. But at this time of year, you know, for us, like we deadlift. And I told Coach Batson this a couple years ago, we deadlift a lot, okay? Uh, we power clean heavy on Monday. We're going to rack hang clean or something like that from uh, mid-thigh on Wednesday. And then we're going to deadlift on Friday, whether that's straight bar, or that's trap bar, that's banded, that's chain, whatever it is. That's what we're doing. And then we're going to speed squat on Monday usually. We're going to back squat on uh, uh, Wednesday. And then Friday, depends on what their strength levels are, you're either going to front squat or you're going to split squat. And you're going to do that heavy, all right, with deadlifts. And then you're going to probably snatch that day too, all right. So that's what we do at Texas, all right. And then press-wise, uh, we'll bench press on Friday. Uh, we'll dumbbell or incline. I like incline a lot better, especially the bigs. Uh, incline on Monday. And then Wednesday, usually push press is what we're hitting, okay? So overhead movement there. And then rows, pull-ups, rows, pull-ups, rows, pull-ups, rows, pull-ups, rows, pull-ups, as much as we possibly can, all right? Um, and I mean heavy bent rows too, all right? Um, uh, and pendle rows are awesome too, help you with deadlifts. Uh, but row, when I say row, it, I mean heavy and heavy pull-ups. 
Uh, we do it all the time. Our O-line guys, our D-line guys can all do pull-ups. And our skill guys can all barbell row pretty heavy. Uh, and I mean like 315 heavy. So that's what we do. So, but yoke bar, elevated pulls. So on that, like deadlift, I'll pull them from the pin. So put it at the kneecap. Still going to pull heavy with it, but we might go from a little bit higher angle so it takes a little pressure off the back or trap bar, whatever it may be. And then obviously two board, three board, you know, elevated pressing to kind of block that range of motion a little bit for them. And that's spring ball right there. You can kind of see we'll go to an 80%, um, you know, during spring ball, but again, three singles. And that's basically um, uh, what they'll do in spring. Now, obviously, the, the running, um, we're doing that on the football field, right? Okay, and we're trying to get three lifts in a week uh, during this time. But same thing, a base, a load, a deload, and then we go up high on the last week. And if you think about what they do on the last week of spring ball anyway, most times that's when the guys are going to hit their last helmet practice. They usually do that right before the spring game. And most spring games are pretty de-emphasized, to be honest with you. As far as reps, with most of your dudes, they're going to take about a quarter to a half, and then they're going to be out. So they really have that last week of spring ball, they really got two hard practices, if that. All right, so you kind of look at that as far as how you set that up. And if it's different for you, then you obviously would adjust that uh, um, intensity cycle as far as what you do with your guys. And so everybody's a little bit different. That's our situation and how we do it. You guys good on that? Okay. Post-spring, that's what I'm in right now. That's why my voice is jacked a little bit. Um, I think I was telling uh, Coach Batson that last night, my voice is shot, so that tells you we got a young team. <laughs> uh, so old guys, you know, you got to yell as much, you know what I mean? Like, you know, motivate all the time. You got a bunch of young guys, you know, your voice gets shot all the time. So, uh, so right now we're in, uh, we're doing a volume accumulation phase right now. Um, I love this part of the year uh, with the guys because we're still working hypertrophy, but we're also still working bar speed. Uh, Intensity-wise, it's low. Um, you know, we started off 50% coming out of spring ball. Those guys are pretty beat up. We figured it out in spring ball, roughly by catapult standards, we played nine Big 12 championship games uh, is what we played. <laughs> Player load average per, per practice. So, so you know. They're stroked, you know what I mean, coming out of there. So we gave them a couple days after, off after spring, uh, spring ball or the spring game, came back on Wednesday and hit, uh, you know, three lifts in a row and two, two runs. Um, but this time of year, so volume accumulation, just think of it like this. So right now we're doing, last year we did 40 singles. Right now we're doing 20 doubles on tier one. So Monday we got, when I go back, we'll deadlift, straight bar deadlift, 20 doubles every 30 seconds at 60% on Monday. All right, and that'll be 40, double, that'll be 40 reps total volume-wise. So like a four by 10, right? But it's still done, you know, in a short, uh, short, short time span as far as rest, but I'm getting quality technique, all right? I'm still getting what I want bang for my buck as far as my volume, um, but I'm also getting a pretty high heart rate at that time, so I'm working a little bit of conditioning in the weight room also, but I'm also keeping my technique sound. But we're also getting what? Good bar speed movement, okay? And then again, when you start having guys that are squatting over five or six or whatever it may be, and you say, hey, I want to hit four by 10 with them, that's 60%. And you guys know what's going to happen at about rep seven on to 10 on that set three, right? It's going to be ugly and nasty, all right? And some of that's okay because it's a little grimy and dirty, and sometimes you want to see that with your guys. But when you got some big dudes that are handling some weight, you don't want to see technique go south on you, right? Okay, someone's going to get dinged up and hurt. So uh, we kind of hit best of both worlds here. All right, we're still hitting the volume we want to get done because I'm going to get 40 reps done in nine and a half minutes on that clip, okay? So you're hitting it every 30 seconds, boom, a two, all right, a double. So they hit doubles, <laughs> you know, the laugh. So a deadlift, 20 doubles, and then we'll give them a little bit of shot of water, all right, get a little break. And then we'll get the Olympic bar out, and then we'll hit 20 doubles of hand clean. All right, same thing, 60%, okay? And then we'll go do all of our lower body back end stuff, all right? Uh, reverse hypers, uh, single leg iso split squat lunge. We're at 45 seconds this week for both legs, three sets of that. Um, and then the same thing on your upper body the next day. So on Monday, we'd have ran six 200s. 
all right, and actually got them on the turf where we run the curve the whole nine yards, all right. Six 200s, four to one rest, all right. That takes us about 30 minutes to get that done. I give them a 15 minute break. We're straight in the weight room, we start that lift. All right, that's what we'll hit on Monday. Um, Tuesday will be an upper body emphasis day. So that'll be uh, push press, 20 doubles, all right, fat grip push press. And then we go straight to Pendelay rows, 20 doubles, all right, on that day. Uh, we also hit that day is our, our two 300 shuttles. We'll hit three this week, we've been at two, and that'll be 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. All right, same thing, four to one rest. So they're getting about four minutes break in between each shuttle. All right, and I get same thing. I give them about 15 minutes, go inside, hit the upper body lift. Wednesday, no run. We're coming straight back to a lift. So I give them Friday, Saturday, Sunday off right now. I'm being nice. You know what I mean? So, um, so we do four days straight. So I don't run them on that four, on the third day. Yes, sir? Hey, Coach, you said you do uh, 20 by 2 on eight plays. So do you notice a decline in bar speed once guys get to about maybe set 10? Pretty good. I tend to it up. I mean, watched it last. Uh, oh, oh, do I see a decline in uh, uh, bar speed uh, set 10 or whatever it is? Not really. Um, but you got to remember, like percentage wise, like last week we were 55%. I mean, you better be moving the bar fast, right? And you better be able to do that multiple sets, no question. But you got to build into that, right? You know what I mean? It's not just. We've had two weeks off. Let's roll straight into this. I mean, you got to build like this is all building block stuff, right? All right. Hopefully, I can get to the bowl prep, you know, and, and show you what we did last year in the bowl game, as far as our bowl prep cycle. But, but this is that block that leads into summer, right? Okay. So no, we haven't seen that. And if you do, what do you do? Take a little weight off, right? Especially on the clean. Okay. Good question. Thank you. Um, and then. Wednesday, we don't run that day, uh, but that is another lower body day. So we'll back squat them 20 doubles, and then we'll power clean from the deck 20 doubles, all right? Um, and then Friday, we come back. This week, we'll hit four 200s. We'll just repeat it. We'll just knock two off, though, on, I'm sorry, on Thursday. And that'll be, again, an upper body day. So that's 20 double bench, 20 double pull-ups. Then we go ISO inverted rows, like 45 seconds uh, for three sets on that. Uh, and then a bunch of upper body stuff, basically... Neck and all that other stuff too, up. Good on that? Okay, so that leads into summer one, all right? That cycle right there, so our volume, okay? And our conditioning phase, if you will, all right? So there you gotta kinda see it right there. 50, 55, 60, 65, sub-max work, and then uh, and that's your volume. volume, volume accumulation. Summer, again, We'll go five straight weeks, so we'll start this year May 28th, the day after Memorial Day. We'll go Tuesday to Saturday, and they'll get Sunday off, then we start week two the next week. So, is what it is. I'm not going to train them on Memorial Day, uh, but I'm going to get my five days in, all right? So, we're going to go Tuesday through Saturday, and then uh, we'll come back that next week, get back on a normal schedule Monday through Friday. So, uh, we train five days a week in the summer. Um, uh, my O-line, D-line guys, they'll lift five days. And they will lift five days, not auxiliary lift on Tuesday, Thursday. I put their bench press stuff, all their press work on Tuesday, Thursday with some light Olympic stuff also. So we'll hit some type of Olympic every day, five days a week in the summer. And they'll run three days a week. They'll run Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. I don't put them on the high-speed treadmills in the summer. They don't need it as much. Uh, the skill guys, skill and combos, linebackers, tight ends, uh, long snappers, they'll be on the high-speed treads. So the first block, first four weeks, O-line, D-line, list five, they run three. Uh, our newcomers coming in, they'll have three lifts, three runs, and then they'll have a small two-day two auxiliary uh, mobility package they'll do on Tuesday, Thursday. Our skill guys and combos, they'll, run, they'll lift three, they'll run four. Uh, their high-speed treadmill days on Friday, the acceleration uh, half gassers is what we do on Tuesday. We do a little, little switch on that though a little bit. So hamstring stuff you're always worried about when you come back, right? So we'll run full team. So I'll go, all, I'll go defense up first because defense wins championships, okay? So they'll be on the line first. They'll run over. They'll touch the line, and then they'll backward run all the way back, okay? 22 seconds. They got to make it, okay? So sprint, they're making it over there. Skill guys usually on the other side, they're hitting it about eight seconds. So they're sprinting, right? 
touch the line, backward run back, okay? And so eliminate some of those hamstring issues you have with half gassers coming back, but also develops what? Hamstring glute, right? And then get in that cycle, okay? So the skill guys, they gotta go sideline to sideline, combo sideline to the numbers, all right? The close numbers to us, and then bigs sideline to the next hash, okay? Does that make sense, all right? We do it in four quarters, okay? So my first quarter is two reps, two minute break. My next quarter, three reps, two minute break. My third quarter, two reps, two minute break. And then you finish the last quarter with the most reps, three reps, and then we go, and we're done. So that's what we do on Tuesday. And that'll work 10, 12, 14, 16, all right? That's what'll be on week four, okay? Uh, Wednesday, big squat Wednesday, we hit that. Shout out to Joe Ken, all right? Um, uh, that's a big day for us. Everybody squats that day, everybody. Kickers too, all right? Um, but that's, that's Wednesday, we don't run that day in that block. Thursday's change of direction day for everybody. Friday's high speed uh, treadmill day for the uh, skill guys. And then we blow out another leg session with the O-line D-line again on Friday. So is what it is. And then week five, we're at our heaviest week. We add a run day to everybody, okay, on week five. So the skill guys go to a five-day run, three-day lift, all right? Excel on Monday. Tuesday turns into the half gassers turn into what we call quarters, all right? And that is four quarters of programmable uh, movement uh, agilities, if you will. So they're on the sideline, everyone's on a line. There's about six deep, it's a full team run. So I got a guy here, I got another guy on the yard line, yard line, yard line. And so I would say, okay, first quarter, first rep, everybody on their stomach, set, whistle, boop, they sprint to the numbers, finish. Jog all the way over, all right? And I just do that with the next six guys, right? And then I jog over, our staff jogs over, we do the same exact drill coming back. Does that make sense? That's two reps down. So it's four quarters of linear sprint, lateral shuffle, second quarter, backward run, third quarter, and then what do you think fourth quarter is? Crossover, all right? What I talked about earlier, right? The four things. Okay, so it might be this. My first two reps is a sprint. My next two reps set-wise, I'm facing north. I'm sprinting to the next five. Left foot stick, right foot turn, through the top of the numbers, right? So it's all program, right? Okay? And what do we see from catapult data? We see deficiencies right and left cuts on the IMAs. We actually see it. It shows it. This guy's a good left foot sticker. This guy's not a very good right foot uh, sticker. And so what do you do with that? You address it with your correctives and your mobility work inside the weight room, post lift, all right? So that day's another conditioning day, but more cutting in there, all right? So it's like that. So it's backward run or backward sprint, set, open to my right on the whistle. So whistle, boop, 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 second whistle, open to my right, sprint through the numbers, jog over. So a full speed rep for about what? Five to six seconds with what? Active recovery, set it down for a second, about 30 seconds, and then you're coming right back. All right, sounds like what? Sounds like football, okay? Okay, so that's Tuesday. Wednesday, the high-speed tread for the skill guys goes to Wednesday, plus squat day, okay? And then Thursday's change of direction. Friday becomes our metabolic play day. And that is change of direction, so think pro agility, if you will, all right? So for an O-line, D-line guy, he's got seven seconds to make a 30-yard drill. All right, and then he's got 20 seconds rest. We start off with 20 reps, so four quarters of five. Does that make sense? But we do it in competition. So D-line, O-line is going against each other, 30-yard drill, combos 35, and guess what the skill guy's got to do? 40, all right? And they all got to make it in seven seconds. They all got a 20 to 25-second rest time. That's about what it is from snap to whistle, all right? We take our breaks on the quarters, two minutes, all right? Do all that work, uh, and that's on Friday. That player load per minute is four times higher than a game. Player load per minute. So when they roll into camp, think they're ready for it? Yes, they are, conditioning-wise. They put it all in. So we look at every single day, Monday, high-speed yardage. We get around 700 yards of high-speed yardage that day on Monday, okay? So what I say wide receivers was in, in, in practice, 450. All right, so Monday we get about 700 yards high-speed. I can't match 
And we can't match volume in practice. Does that make sense? I can't get 7,000 yards in a run day. Like, I'm not gonna. It's gonna take me two hours. We got eight hours a week, okay? So we break it down segment-wise throughout the week of what we're trying to get practice-wise to get these guys ready for camp, all right? So that's how it works. Your bigs add another day too, run-wise. And all theirs does is excel quarters, big squat Wednesday, change of direction Thursday, metabolic place Friday, and then deadlift your face off on Friday, all right? And split squats. Yes, sir. Do you have position groups trained independently of each other? Do you have like multiple groups throughout the day or mixed groups? Good question. Do I have position groups? Um, do I have individual position groups trained throughout the day? I try, and I got unbelievable staff, right? I mean, you saw what I had, right? I got 27 years of head experience. Do you think I trust those guys? I trust them every day, all right? Uh, so everyone's got a position group that, I mean, guess who I train? Can, can we guess? O-line, D-line, okay? It is what it is, all right? So uh, CO, unbelievable speed movement guy. He writes all, I mean, writes all our stuff. We've been doing it for this since 2007, okay? Uh, he's got the wideouts, DBs, okay? Uh, Coach Grace got the combos, and Coach Potts works also with the, uh, um, with the, with the skill guys, and Coach Peep's got quarterback specialists and uh, long-term injury guys, okay? And then Van Dyke just walks around like a, like a uh, sports scientist that he is, all right, and tells us what we're doing wrong all the time, okay? <laughs> and again, I listen, I hear it. Sometimes I don't listen, uh, but I hear him, you know what I mean? So uh, we talk about that all the time. So... Um, so that's, so answering the question, sorry. <laughs> uh, so what we do is we team run. I got 50 sleds. Again, you know, at Houston we had tires. We bought used tires. We didn't buy them, they gave them to us, okay? And to be honest with you, Houston and Third Ward, you can go find them anywhere on the side of the street. <laughs> so uh, it just is what it is, okay? All right, Campbell. That's exactly right. So, so we use we use tires there. All right. Now we got the spud sled uh, little scoop deals. Put the plates in. Those are awesome. All right for acceleration for us, and they're easy to move stuff around. So we do that Monday full team, and then they got lift groups. So you got three lift groups in the day. So we'll come in seven o'clock, usually about a ten, and then eleven thirty, and then afternoons academics. I mean they're locked down. So uh, that's pretty much what it is all week. And then the tread days. It's five flights, so it's like a 45-minute flight. You know what I'm saying? So CO and the groups down there running those guys through the treads on that on that stuff. Does that answer your question? Yes, okay. Yes, sir. Hey, Coach, how much football are, are the guys getting um, actually doing during that time? Also, how much football are they getting in the time? So skill development, Seven, meetings, five. things like that. So again, you got eight hours, right? Okay, and you got to fit all this work in, plus meetings, plus positional work. So Tuesday, Thursday, they stay after the runs, okay? All right, and those are tough days, right? I mean, 16 half gassers, and then they get about a 10-minute break. Nutrition staff does an unbelievable job. They, they fuel them up. There's all kinds of stuff out there for them. Ah, uh, they're eating and stuff. And then they go right to individuals, and they run it. Player-led. Coach-fed, player-led, right? That's what it should be, all right? I hope. If it's not, if it's always us, we're in trouble, you know what I mean? So... Coach fed, player led, all right? And so those guys go out there and they run the individuals. And right now we got a really good bunch of kids. And, and when you win a couple games, it does help with buy-in. And then film time, they do the same thing. They've got their whole day set. Now, schedule-wise, I have it. I know what they're doing. Um, and then same thing, too, timing-wise. I tell them, hey, man, you got 30 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever it is. Like, be smart with your body. And then the quarterbacks, uh, like yesterday, Sam Ellinger wants to run seven on seven on Friday. Got it. That's what they're doing. 7.30. Wideouts, running backs, tight ends. Sam wants seven on seven. Go. Shaq wants the old line guys pushing the sled for an hour. Got it. That's what they did. D line guys working at 10, at 10 a.m. Uh, yesterday morning uh, doing their work. You know, that's on their own. And that, you know what? If I schedule that stuff, like well, this is skill development, you know. I think we lose the leadership aspects that we're all trying to strive for to get these guys to like take that stuff and run with it. And you know what? If a guy doesn't show up, then your position unit, which you should have unit pride, all right, then you go attack that, that problem. 
You go get that guy to show up. You go find out why that guy wasn't there. And that's on them. And they work out problems, problem solving, that we all take away from them right now. So, do you have one, Coach? Yeah, so with the coach, coach feds and uh, player-led, do you still track the guys even though they're doing the player-led practice? That is still on catapult. So, so yes. So, he asked, the question was, do we still track, like when they do skill development, it's playing, it's player, uh, um, player-led, is the catapult still on? Yes, it is. Just so you can kind of see volume for that day. You know what I mean? And so we can say, ah, you guys are, you guys are out there too long. Like, you know what I mean? So um, that's, how, that's how we kind of look at it. So good question. Um, so that's summer, all right? So, so we'll do that. So week five, heaviest week in the weight room for the summer, we're going to have another run day. But we want to make this stuff tough. You want to you have some resiliency about these guys. You want to add some things? Well, guess what we're going to do the next week on week six? We got a full off week. <laughs> so uh, July 4th. So we ramp it pretty heav heavy on that week five. And then the next week we're off. You know what I mean? So the coach, you got to know, you know, you got to know how far you can push that accelerator uh, and when the, when the thing's going to redline, uh, you know, when you got to like back off. All right. So, um, so that's what we have uh, going in that. And then after the break, they come back, they're pretty good, refreshed-wise, all that other stuff, and then we roll the, la the next uh, three weeks leading into camp. So you're kind of right there. Pre prepare athletes for demands of camp, high-speed yards, IMAs, which is fancy work for catapult, for acceleration, deceleration, so initial uh, movement assessment. Uh, so that's what we're working on there. Specific energy system development, so that's what we talk about metabolic plays, talk about the quarters. Seven seconds, six seconds, you know, things that are full speed, rest-wise, 20 to 30 seconds in multiple bouts, right? So you think about the team in camp, they're going to go individuals, go to inside drill, seven on seven, things like that, and they come together in team, and they're going to hit, you know, four-play racks, boom, 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 high speed, right? All right, high tempo. Maybe it's a six-play rack. Maybe it's play it, you know what I mean, where they're just going to move up and down the field almost like scrimmage, all right? And that could be a 10-play rack, right? So those guys got to be ready for that stuff uh, rolling into camp. So that's where you start changing what you're doing as far as your energy system uh, ratios and things like that. Yes, sir? Where do you really attack your high-speed yardage? Are you trying to do linear sprints back of the treadmill, or are you doing extended agility work? So where do we, where do we attack our high-speed high speed yardage in our workouts? So Monday, we get it on acceleration day, all right? Because we're going to hit toes, but then we're going to come off the toes and be full speed on the, on the, on the acceleration, like 10, 20s. You know what I'm saying? So, and the guys will carry that. Uh, so we'll get 700 yards that day. High speed tread will get uh, about 900, okay? And then your IMAs is all of your change of direction, uh, metabolic plays, that's all IMAs, high uh, uh, tons there, you drive that up like crazy. Player load per minute there is like four times a game, right? Uh, and that's done on Friday. So that's where we get it at there. And then the quarters, like what I was talking about earlier, that is what? That's volume. You think about that, like that's almost 2,000 yards in that workout that day, all right? Plus your warm-up, your PAP work, okay? So that's where we're getting it at. Yep. Ten minutes. Okay. All right. I'm close. <laughs> uh, movement specificity increases movement speed, joint angles. So... You just got to think about what they're doing as far as what positional needs, all right? And listen, I don't get too crazy about, like, O-line guys doing this drill this way, all right? Why? Because they should be doing that in their skill work after we're done on Tuesday, Thursday. We're talking about um, force production, being able to stick, change directions, being athletic. Does that make sense? All right? That's what we're doing. We're not, we're not skills coaches. That's not what our, our – it's been kind of jumbled up. We are getting them ready physically for the demands of the sport. That's our job. That's why you got to load them. That's why you got to run. You got to put them in, you know, tough situations. Not crazy, but tough, all right? Um, and make them resilient. And make them compete 1 and 0 against the bar, right? I tell them that all the time. You, today, it's you. And that heavy back squat bar. <laughs> and ain't nobody going to be there to save you except a safety pin. That's why they put them in there. They're steel. And sometimes failing 
can, can be successful. Because <laughs> if you never try, never attempt it, how would you ever know? I tell them that all the time. If you haven't got pinned on a squat, then you ain't tried. So that's why they built them, the safety pins, to fail. And it's okay. All right? That's why we don't spot them on the squat all the time. I'm hugging them. You know what I mean? Like, get out of here. All right? So, uh, so I got belts, I mean, and safety pins. So set your safety pin a little higher. Let them, let them crash on it. All right? Um, but, so that's summer. You kind of see right there. And then we work 85% right before we leave. All right? Right before we give them five days off, right when we go into camp. So it just kind of creeps back up there a little bit. So you kind of see right there. 72, 80, 87, 70 down, 90 up, 10 singles. That's a PR day, so they're going to hit uh, 10 singles about every minute and 15 seconds, 90% uh, on, on the heavy days. <clears throat> Good there? All right. Fall camp. That's tough. Tempering rods, we got a ton of those. We got about 10 or 12 of those. Those are awesome. I don't know if you guys ever do that. We do it every single day. Guys come in. Uh, Pre-lift, they got to come in, they got to weigh in, they got to do their, uh, their, uh, um, um, their, their evaluation form on the iPad. Uh, they do that every morning, how much they slept, all that other stuff. And then they lay down on the floor and the interns roll these guys out, man, every single day. It takes about two minutes, head to toe, and then they're out. It's mandatory, all right? Um, they don't do it, then their position groups deals with it, all right? Um, and then, obviously, everything you possibly think to get these guys mentally and physically prepared for the next day. <laughs> Six days straight of just grinding, right? Mentally and physically. And you got to be smart with what you're doing, uh, what you put on them, putting their hands, things like that. Because they are testy. Uh, they're tired. They're worn out. Uh, they, they get enough coaching and agitation all day long. Uh, so as a strength coach, you got to probably back off a little bit as far as your mentality a little bit and revert back to when you were playing maybe if you did and think about how you felt during camp, which I remember it wasn't fun, all right? It was awful, matter of fact, okay? Um, and it's supposed to be, to be honest with you, because it builds the chemistry, builds the backbone of what you're going to do for the football season, okay? Uh, but basically this time of year, we'll basically we'll lift once, then we'll mow the next day because we have six days with them. So basically it's a lift, a mobility session, foam roll, all that other stuff. Sight, you know, we kind of move around, get them moving too. I just sit on a foam roll the whole time. Uh, so some, some, some different band stuff we do with them as far as lunging, flows, things like that. Um, and then the next day we'll lift. So it's basically lift, mob, lift, mob, lift, mob. That's how it kind of works for the, for the, throughout the camp. Intensity-wise, not very heavy. Uh, and volume, of course, very low. You kind of see there. That last week, we'll hit, we'll hit an 80, though. We'll get up there a little bit. In season, and I'll, I'll, we go heavy. <laughs> uh, we do. Uh, we do singles, doubles. Um, I mean, you're training fast twitch, right? When you do singles, you go heavy. Uh, that's, what you're, that's what you're trying to get out of them. Now, you built these guys from January uh, all the way to this point. Why would you stay? Why would you? Why would you get away from that? All right. All you're going to do is you talk about well, we want to be. We want to be fresh. We want to be all their stuff, stuff. Which you want to be fresh and all that stuff. But you got to be strong. You got to be powerful. Middle of the season, you know, a lot of people I hear it all the time, like they back off. Um, and you got to be smart with it. I know in the middle of the season, all that stuff, and you got mid midterms and all that stuff. Uh, but you also got bye weeks in there too. And the bye weeks, to me, you cut back practice uh, a ton. You get that central nervous system, that motor, all that stuff to kind of do what? It goes down. And then you come back off the bye week, and all the coaches are mad, like, man, these guys are oh, they're lethargic, da da da. And you're saying, yeah, we did too little. All right. So. Um, that's a perfect week to ramp it up in the weight room, to be honest with you. Bowl prep for us, bowl prep for us, that's off season. I'll show you in a second. We went to 90. I mean, Buffalo Bar, uh, I can think of it, my front seven guys, right before we came to um, uh, New Orleans. The week before, we heavy deaded from the scoops, from the knee, 
we buffalo barred triple chain uh, heavy singles and we three board fat grip benched heavy and rode I know my, most of my guys 335 for singles 355 a couple guys for singles um, and I know I had on my front seven I had 12 guys buffalo bar five plates on triple chain so at the top of that movement that's 620 all right and that's that's free squat down and up I'm sorry to a box I'll take that back sorry um, and then dead all of them over five and I had guys PR on their three board so that's what we did the week before all right then we took off and went to New Orleans so I'll show you so 90% with the combinating resistance the Roth method so uh, chains that's like in the season I will tell you uh, shoot there it is that's the bowl prep cycle right there so right there 90 so right after the Big 12 championship game gave him a couple days off but we came in hit the 60s to kind of flush them out and that was the first thing we started on bowl prep week one two three and then deload uh, um, at the bowl site and we lifted twice at the bowl site at Tulane appreciate you Kyle um, so um, but at Texas our last lift that week was at 90% okay and three singles no, so Ross basically like go like this. It's a pyramid is what it is. 80, 85, 90, all right? And you hit the bang, the bang the single, and you're done, all right? And we're touching that weight. In the season, it's always going to hover in the 80s. Low 80s, 85, uh, somewhere in that range. I think our average percentage through the fall in season was like 78%, all right? And if you looked at average volume to that, it's probably two reps, okay? And then total volume for the set, um, probably 12, all right? So if you look like prillip and low, prillip and optimal, all right, or prillip and high, you guys look at those cycles, that's basically kind of what you look at. In seasons, prillip and low. Yes, sir? Uh, for the rows, what grip would you allow them to have? Put them that heavy. Your choice? <laughs> so what was the grip choice on the rows? Um, most times, you know, we'll be strict with it. Like, we want supinated or whatever but when I start getting them those heavy max ones I'm like dude pick it up whatever you want to pick it up all right uh, I'm good you know what I mean so if it's alternate underhand I don't care like on that now there's times you know early in the year like you're strict on this is the grip we want pendulum you want that one I you know whatever it is like you're strict on it but when it gets really heavy like I'm like, whatever grab it let's go so good question but so that's that gives you an idea right there so in season wise too in season we lift Sunday and that's a heavy leg day, man. I, we go after it, okay? And then Wednesday, speed. Speed dynamic. So you almost think triphasic a little bit, okay? Does that make sense? Sunday, everything's heavy. Pretty good volume, all right? Flush them out. Mondays, we call it be a pro Monday. Come in. We, we do cryo. We do floats. Uh, we do massage work. And then the guys come in and do extra work on their own. That's our off day. Tuesday, heavy, hard practice, full pads. We tackle at Texas. Two games we didn't tackle, we lost. West Virginia, Oklahoma State, like in the back end of the season, because the guys want to take the lowers off. Todd Orlando and the head man came in and said, we got to tackle. So we went right back to it, tackled, finished off season where we finished off. So, you know, it's always, always about the head coach. What the head coach wants, then you better match that as far as your intensity and your, your uh, uh, thought process uh, also. So uh, that's what we did. That's what we do at Texas. Um, so that's... That's us. That's not everybody. I mean, I'm not saying it's this way it has to be, uh, but this is what we do, and this is how we train for it. Um, so uh, I think that's it. My time is uh, done. I did. I got through all the way through the slides. <laughs> that's a first. <laughs> Appreciate you guys. Thank you.